So I, I recall just my notation from last time, so no, nothing extraordinary. Uh, F is a local field, G is with active group, G hat is a, a dual with active group, and yeah, so the, the action on G hat is the Langlands one, so not the C one, but uh, everything I, I will say carries over for the C action. And so last time what you did, <coughs> I recall that we defined this funny uh, discretization of the, of the veil group. So the veil group is also really a discretization of the Galois group, where you discretize Frobenius, which is canonical. And what we did is, is go one step further uh, in a non-canonical way, which might be annoying for certain purposes. And um, so we, we chose a topological generator of the e time inertia. And uh, we look, and so a list of Frobenius in the, in the, so the time, so the quotient of WF mod the wild inertia, I, I denote it by WT. And inside WT, which is a topological group, uh, I look at this discrete group generated by tau and sigma, which is uh, due to this, uh, I mean, it's a free group with one relation. So, so what you get in the end is a group which resembles this group. And I just define WF0 to be the inverse image of this WT0 in WF. Okay, and then what we have um, con introduced last time is, say, a fixed uh, depth somehow. That is a, an open uh, subgroup of PF that you might want to, to choose characteristic in PF. And then we have introduced this uh, scheme, which is just an affine scheme that parameterizes all co-cycles um, for this action here uh, from this group in G hat. And which, so this has the advantage that you can really define it over Z bracket one over P. So you have something which interpolate over all uh, uh, ZL. Except that, a priori, this is something which is non-canonical, so that might be, I mean, that's some issue that we have to take care of. Okay, so, and so maybe also I will, uh, uh, I will just uh, look at the direct limit of all this guy. So that will not be an affine scheme, but we see this is still a, a, a scheme. So the direct limit over all P. And actually, <clears throat> when you have two guys contain uh, one of in, uh, uh, in each other, they actually they are direct summoned. So that's why in the end you get a, a really a scheme and not a, a in scheme. Okay, so what are the basic, maybe a basic, uh, basic in quotation mark, uh, the results on this, uh, on this space. So one of them, the first one is, uh, uh, I mean, we have seen it in many talks. So this is this uh, flat and uh, local completed section property. So Z1, so maybe I will just call this one uh, Z1. Z1 sometimes means uh, finite uh, depths or sometimes the, the whole stuff. So this Z1 is actually um, a flat and uh, LCI, but actually it's even uh, component by component, it's a global complete intersection uh, of relative dimension, uh, dimension of G. And uh, and also so flat and okay here over the base, which is z bracket one over p. So that's something we have seen in uh, many talks. And also z one is reduced and um, equivalently it's, it's geometrically con geometrically smooth. Generic Elismus. Um, the third result 
that um, so I did not give a name to the so this is an affine an affine scheme. So let me give a name to the ring. So that's that is spec of say R G at one P. One P is so remember that we have fixed P. So this is just a finitely generated uh, Z bracket one over P algebra, and so this ring I claim it is uh, L radically separated. Uh, for any prime different from p, or so equivalently, any component of it is uh, so it's flat over this, and any component is actually faithfully flat. Okay, and um, so here, the fourth property, so it's what relates, uh, it, it, it what tells us that this is a, a, a good moduli space, is that actually, if I look at the universal morphism or co-cycle, um, so I don't know if I want to give it a name, okay. Uh, from WS0 to G hat. And then uh, this guy extends uniquely to some uh, yes, I will denote it with a, a, a decoration L here which now goes from WF without the zero to uh, this ring, but I have to include ZL inside, so we have to raise the scalars. Okay, and which is radically continuous in the sense that, in the sense due to Helm that I explained last time. Um, and moreover, it is universal for this extension is universal for all radically continuous uh, co-cycle. Okay, so <clears throat> so that's it, and maybe a, a, a fifth point among the basic results is that you have exactly the same as what I wrote, uh, but for uh, what I call and what I think Shinwenzu called and eladic uh, topology, so and eladically uh, continuous instead of eladically continuous. So uh, uh, let me remind you that this is what this is equivalent to the condensed. Uh, uh, formalism that uh, Farg and Scholz uh, use. Uh, so, okay, so these are the basic results. So, if time permits, in the end of the talk, and maybe I give some hints of the proof, uh, especially this one. <laughs> I mean, still see it appeared in so many talks, but uh, for the time being, let me just make a few comments. Uh, maybe also I should give some credit, but let me then start with comments. So, so the, the, the item four, it implies that uh, although these constructions are non-canonical, at least if you raise the scala uh, to ZL, then it doesn't depend on any choice. Continuous, this is, yes, continuous uh, one co-cycles. 
Um, so the point five implies that actually this construction, uh, what, what I, just, I just said, this construction agrees with uh, Farg and Scholze. So their construction is really different. They are really in terms of condensed uh, co-cycles. But if you translate it in terms of uh, topological, uh, yes, in terms of, of ordinary um, co-cycle resistant topological condition, this is a, you get the same construction. So this is the same space. And uh, the advantage, so it was raised many times in, the, in, the, in this talk, in the, the, the other talks, the advantage of this flat and uh, local complete intersection property is that you don't have to worry about uh, uh, potential derived structure. So yeah, as far as LLIF goes, you don't really care about any, any way about uh, um, potential derived structure, but if you're interested in some uh, geometric equivalence of categories, as in a category file local language, then on one side, there is this coherent category, uh, which is derived uh, category of coherent sheets, and it is really sensible to, sensitive to uh, a potential derived structure. Okay, so that's rather good news, at least for me. Uh, so should I give credit? So yeah, so about credits, uh, there are basically uh, three papers where all these where these objects show up at the same time. So a paper by uh, myself, Helm, Kering Suk, and Moss. A uh, paper by Farg and Scholze and a paper by Shi Wenzhou, and maybe there are other papers on the subject. And so typically the first property is proved in all papers. So the second one, I think it's in our paper, DHKM, and maybe in, in Shi Wenzhou's paper. And the third one, I think it's in our paper. The, and the fourth one too. And the fifth one, just, well, it's in none of these papers, but some kind of reformulation of uh, what you can extract from it. Um, okay. Okay. So as I said, maybe uh, maybe later I can I can give some uh, sketches of proofs. So. Uh, now I would like to give a little, in some more, yeah, further results on the structure of these uh, spaces, and maybe starting with the connected component. So as you may guess, if you are interested in connected components, that will be, I mean, you have to choose over which base you, you are working. So I will first work over Z bar one over P, then look at what's happening over Z L bar. So say now over z bar, one over p. And here, over this global ring, global base, maybe the first theorem is the following. Uh, is that if g is tamely ramified, And um, yeah, then and look just just look at the tame part of this uh, of this space, which is the, the the part where p equals pf. So you were just looking at this uh, kind of toy model of uh, uh, toy example uh, of our modular space, and 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 this is is connected. Um, so what's interesting is um, that there is a mirror property on the, maybe I should put a mirror here. So the mirror property, and maybe in, in, in many of uh, the results I will state about uh, the modular space of uh, parameters, uh, sometimes you will see on the other side some 
expected mirror properties on the representation theoretic side, which ultimately would follow if we had uh, this uh, uh, categorical uh, uh, local Langlands correspondence over on this base, for example. Um, so a mirror property is that um, under the same assumption on G, uh, if you look at the category of representation of G of F of that zero, well, you can make sense. This is a direct sum actually of the, of the category. So depth zero has appeared in Jessica's talk. Uh, and so this is uh, indecomposable. So this is a block. block. And so, um, so it may be strange. Uh, so, so, so people working on complex representation, they know exactly how to decompose this according to Bernstein uh, decomposition, I mean, explicitly in terms of types. So, you know, there are plenty of components. And actually, if you look over ZL bar, uh, a recent result of uh, Thomas Lanard tells us what is the decomposition that you get in blocks. And so you get, basically, it tells you when you have to group some uh, Bernstein and impotent in order for them to be L-adic integral and primitive. And what's funny is that when you vary L, actually, the basically, the the partition of the set of uh, complex idempotents that you get, uh, they all overlap. And so uh, in the end, you, you prove that this is decomposable. And, and so I, can, I want to see this as a mirror property uh, of uh, disconnectedness here. Is that uh, something that one can see already for the windows to So minus um, so what is true is that if you take, uh, if you take, uh, um, yes, so the question was, is, is this something we can see for finite groups like this? Or, so for finite groups, what is true is that, yeah, if you, if you take G, a finite, finite reductive group, uh, F finite, uh, it is true that this category is indecomposable over Z bar one over P. So, Meaning that in any idempotent will require you to invert some some of some prime. Okay, so so this is uh, th this tells you something about one component. So how to go further? So the idea, very simple idea, is that com twer com in, uh, as Matt explained, uh, in this L equals P, L different from P cases. What's going on on the wild inertia is very somehow easy. So first thing you want to, to do is restrict to uh, wild inertia. So let us uh, introduce some notation. So phi uh, will be, um, um, yes, yeah, some one co-cycle, but uh, from the in, uh, wild inertia subgroup. So continuous one cycling. So continuity is just that it factors where some finite quotient. And then want, I want to consider uh, Z1 uh, sub phi, which will be the close sub, uh, club sub scheme of uh, Z1 defined by the condition that phi restrict to pf is really phi. Okay, so this is a closed subscheme of z1. And moreover, it's uh, so it is stable by the centralizer of uh, of this uh, phi. So uh, yeah, it will be curly phi and phi. So it's stable by this centralizer. Uh, and this centralizer, uh, I will see, so this is a smooth uh, z bar 1 over p uh, group scheme. And with reductive uh, neutral component. So, 
So of course, in general, this fiber, somehow this fiber will most often be, will be empty. And we'll say that uh, phi is admissible if it's not empty. If z1 phi is not empty. Uh, okay, so, so the mirror property will be on another blackboard. So, um, so what we can prove uh, with this notation is the following theorem. Uh, that we have a decomposition of our space, global space, as a direct, I mean, as a, yes, co-product. Of uh, induced space okay, like this. So uh, what do I mean by this? So this is really so this is the fiber product over so the base is s, s is spec z bar one over p. And so this is really. Uh, the usual fiber product, and then there is an action of this uh, group scheme on with diagonal action, and then I, I take the quotient. So in which sense do I take a quotient? First, I can take the quotient in the sense of shift theory, for example, uh, for the FPP effort, for the etal topology, and, and, and the result is that this is representable by some sum and of this guy. This is an affine scheme, and this is a sum and of this guy. And so here, uh, what I'm... I'm looking at a set of representative um, yes, of admissible um, phi, so valued, yes, exactly like this, valued in z bar 1 over p, so up to conjugacy. Sorry? Uh, and, and so this summon, you can also see it as those uh, curly phi, such that phi restrict to PF is etal locally, uh, conjugate to phi. So it is true that th this, uh, this summon represents uh, this stuff, which is not clear that it is representable a priori. Um, okay. So, now I would like to make an observation. Suppose, uh, suppose I have, suppose we can find some curly phi in uh, so z1 phi and valued in z bar bracket 1 over p. So it's not clear at all that there exists such a stuff. Okay. Uh, so if phi is admissible, the, the scheme is not empty. Maybe it is concentrated in, in one, I mean, one prime, or I mean, it, it may not be, okay, faithfully flat a priori. Even so I spoiled the result of the, uh, um, I mean, I told you just before that it is face faithfully flat, but uh, at this point, actually, we don't know yet because, uh, I mean, the proof of this use part of this. Um, so, so suppose we can find some phi like this. Um, then what you can do is um, then, um, you can let WF act on the centralizer by uh, conjugation uh, via phi. Okay, because phi, has, phi of WF has to normalize um, the centralizer of phi. Of, of, yes, curly phi has to normalize the centralizer of phi. And so denote, say, add phi. Uh, denote uh, this action 
by add five. And then we can understand this, uh, uh, this uh, closed subscheme uh, just uh, uh, in the following way. Yes, so add five this action, and maybe note that it has to be trivial on PF because uh, PF acts by phi, and so on the centralizer of phi, it, it acts trivially. So, so this action is tame. Okay, and then uh, what you can do is look at the following morphism. And this is an isomorphism from uh, the Z1 for this action of the tame group with valued in the centralizer uh, to uh, Z1 uh, phi, which just takes some cocycle to eta times phi, just product in the, in the group. And this is an isomorphism, this is completely formal. There is nothing. Uh, but it tells you that this closed subscheme is actually some scheme of cocycle uh, for some action of, of the tame uh, on, on some group. Okay. And so uh, now you try to think, now, now you start to think that maybe there is some kind of reduction to, to the easy setting. I mean, the, yeah. The, <laughs> Tamely ramified case where you look at only at tamely ramified parameters. And, that's, and that, that is true. But maybe I will explain this under some simplifying uh, assumption. So uh, I will, uh, so for simplicity, I will assume that this is connected. Otherwise, yeah. So for simplicity, otherwise it gets quite technical and a uh, lot of notation. But it can be done. For simplicity, assume that uh, the centralizer are connected. All. And <clears throat> so that's not completely unreasonable because, uh, for example, if uh, P is not 2, then it's true for any classical group. That's not completely uh, unreasonable, but any, anyway, you can do something in general. And so in this case, so you have really a, a reductive group scheme here. And the, only, oh, so, and, and the only two problems you have is that, first, it's not clear that there is some, such a phi. And second, it's not clear that, I mean, this action may be anything. And so we have the following theorem, which is quite technical, but um, is that we can choose. Not, not only there, there exists one, but we can choose phi in uh, so uh, um, so an extension of this phi uh, valued in z bar one over p, which um, such that we have the following properties. Uh, so such that phi of w f is finite. And it normalizes well uh, a Borel pair. So a Borel pair. So means a Borel with a torus. Okay, so that's the best we can do at the moment in general. But if uh, moreover, if you accept to so if the center. is smooth. So for example, if it, the center is a torus, so it is smooth over z bar 1 over p, then, uh, then you can find phi that really preserves the pinning. And OK, so in this case, so in, 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 this, uh, in this case, what you, if you, if you take the, the two theorems here, this one and this one, it tells you that you have a decomposition of uh, your parameter space as a sum of uh, in-use parameter from 
the space of tame parameters of some tamely ramified group. Okay, and so that's um, um, and then with the if you add this theorem here, you have also a description of all connected components. Okay, so say all three. All three theorems, they imply that uh, any connected component uh, is induced uh, from the tame space of a tame group, uh, say auxiliary group. Okay, um, and so Mary, maybe I can I can tell what will be the expected mirror property so uh, on the representation theory of the group you started with. And um, so, yes, it would be no surprise now that we have all this uh, categorical uh, categorification, but actually it, it emerged maybe before the emergence of all these categorified local Langlands correspondence. Um, so the expected properties is um, maybe, so first of all, there should exist, should exist a decomposition. Um, rep as a product for the same for the same set so under this assumption this is simply this set phi in general there are some additional data of yes sub phi here whatever it is uh, so really a, a direct product with each one so a block decomposition And okay, and then and then um, well, after all, you certainly expect that there is a countable decomposition of this category, and this is a countable set. And then okay, so any bijection should should be okay. But then you also require some um, so some compatibility with local Langlands when it exists. So what do I mean by this? I mean that if you have a, a complex representation, uh, irreducible complex representation, so it belongs to one of these blocks and it has a, a parameter and, 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 the param and, and of course to which block it should uh, belong, just to the parameter with restriction to wild inertia is conjugate to phi. Okay, that's the least you can ask. And then the second Second expectation you, you might have is that, uh, so you can cook up, uh, so suppose G quasi split here, or uh, maybe G quasi split uh, everywhere. And suppose G quasi split, and then um, second expectation you might have is, uh, yeah, so we can cook up with this, uh, with this group and the outer action associated to this phi, which does not depend on any choice. Uh, so phi, phi, um, so, so denote by g, g sub phi, uh, the uh, quasi-split group over f dual to Uh, dual to the centralizer, which I suppose connected for simplicity and together with this action. And then what you expect is that there should be, should exist some equivalence. Uh, an equivalence of categories between uh, the represent, so the depth zero uh, summon of G phi.
and uh, what I denote by d. Okay. And okay, so of course this looks like wishful thinking. So what 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 is known? So and okay, and, and compatible with transfer, compatible with uh, transfer. Sorry, uh, uh, first line. Uh, so denote by G phi, G phi uh, the quasi-split group over F. Yeah. Sorry, uh, which is dual to the centralizer with the action. Uh, sorry, I will mean, uh, we try to write bigger. Um, Do you have a version for this even when uh, the, the centralizer is not connected? Um, yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, when the central is not connected, you have some additional data, but to each one, you can uh, still associate a group. Uh, you still uh, have something. So what, what bothers me uh, more is when, uh, I mean, I, I'm, uh, see, this is not settled whether you can really fix a pinning. So does it mean that there should be some twists in the, I don't know. But uh, so in any case, you're using some kind of zeta, z, z extension you can probably just reduce to this case. And, but then you have to track exactly what the equivalence should do, and maybe there are some twisting somewhere. So anyway, this is compatible with the category file local lang uh, except that, I mean, if you have category file local lang then you certainly have functor at the level of the right categories, or maybe, uh, and then you have to track what's, going, what's happening to the abelian subcategories inside. But anyway, uh, I mean, it's over z bar 1 over p. I don't think uh, there is any reasonable, uh, at the moment, uh, way to formulate uh, yeah. um, category file, yes. Are some results of this nature known, at least after localizing? Uh... So, so this decomposition I have constructed uh, uh, for tame groups. Uh, I mean, the tame groups in Jessica's talk, where p is is big enough where p does not divide the order of the val group. And this uses uh, uh, Kaleta's construction somehow, ideas from Kaleta and, uh, and, and the oxygen result uh, of Jessica. And so there is some such a decomposition and, and it, is, it is compatible with, uh, uh, at least with uh, uh, Tasho's uh, local Langlands correspondence somehow. And then, uh, uh, yes. Uh, about this, uh, this equivalence, there is a work by Kinello for GLN, which tells you that there are indeed, I mean, which tells you that there are indeed some equivalences like this. But uh, there is no, comp I mean, it's difficult to compute anything with it, and, and, and compatibility with Langland is not clear. Okay. So, so what's happening over ZL bar? So maybe I, will, I won't repeat everything because it's happening exactly the same thing. Connected component over ZL bar. So what we did here is, is restrict to PF. Now, uh, the role of PF, so this is exactly the the same story. Uh, with role of PF played by the following group, I, F, L, which is uh, sometimes called prime to L uh, inertia, which is the, the kernel of, of uh, the action of uh, L power root of unity. So this is a prime to L inertia. And so how can you do this? Because a priori I F L is not a subgroup of W F zero, but then you use uh, the item four 
um, which tells you that there is this uh, a, a extension to WF. And then uh, typically what you will define is uh, Z1. So if phi is a continuous cycle like this, then you define uh, Z1 W0 F G at, so you have to extend scalar to ZL bar, and then you 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 uh, you take this phi, or maybe I should put a, an L here to distinguish from previously, and then this will be the locus uh, where our our universal extension restricted to IFL. Uh, is phi. Okay. So this is exactly the, the same definition, except that since this group is not contained in WF0, you have to, to be a little more clever to define the, the objects. And then, basically, exactly the same results apply. You have a decomposition of into induced stuff. Then, yeah, in this case, it's um, much less... Uh, reasonable to assume that the centrals are, con are connected, otherwise you will end up uh, only looking at GLN. But okay, uh, what I told you is that anyway you can uh, improve the method to get any, any data. And then, uh, then you have the same, uh, the same result. And also, uh, okay, so you have the same results, or similar results, say. Uh, and similar expectation. Uh, with one caveat, so there should exist a decomposition of web ZL bar GF, GF according to this, this kind of object and, and additional data taking the non-connectedness uh, of the centralizer into account. And and the only difference that should be a decomposition, but will not be a block decomposition, because uh, yeah, because uh, why why is it so? It will be a stable block decomposition somehow. I mean, it will be uh, given by primitive idempotence of the stable Dachshund center, but uh, a priori it refines in general in uh, in a sum of uh, non-stable idempotence. So it won't, won't be a block decomposition. It will be some decomposition. But it should be true uh, then that we should have equivalence with dep zero should be replaced by the so-called L unipotent uh, subcategory. Okay, and uh, so what I what I can tell is that actually uh, we have such a decomposition now thanks to Farg and Schultz. So I forgot to yeah I forgot to to give credit so yes most of the results are DHKM but uh, yeah the mirror property here is is worked with Lanar and and before Farg and Scholz uh, we, which give you a decomposition in full generality actually Lanar uh, had worked out a, a decomposition which was compatible with the Backer Reader um, uh, Langlands correspondence. And, and regarding the, the existence of uh, uh, equivalence of category, then only the GLN case is known. But of course, uh, probably such equivalences would follow from the um, Fark Scholz conjecture up to this uh, Abelian versus derived uh, categories. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now I want to change topic. I will discuss a little bit uh, of the course quotient, GIT quotient. Why is the So about the course quotient, or 
more sometimes called GIT quotient. So, so what is it? Is it so Z1 mod G, which is uh, we define it as a direct limit of uh, uh, spec. So I take so uh, I take invariant. So I treat each affine in each affine summon I just take invariant. And if you take the limit, you get the, the quotient you want. So, so actually, this is the uh, this is what uh, occurs in fragan scholz morphism. Okay, fragan scholz map. But what's interesting with this? Uh, what maybe makes this uh, uh, object interesting is that uh, we have fragan scholz map. Uh, which goes from, so, uh, uh, say, let me pretend that this, there is a ring. I mean, let me pretend that this is an affine scheme. I mean, Peter did this, so I can do this. Uh, let me pretend it is an affine ring. So what they do is, or maybe just take the projective limit of this uh, before taking GIT invariant or, or, or after, it's the same. And so uh, to, yeah, so, uh, over the L bar. Okay, so they have defined this. Of course, they have defined uh, they define something to the center of uh, the category of sheaves on on Benji, and then you can project on on just on the on, on the usual bench and center, and then then you get this map and does very nice <laughs> properties. And this is of course a, a very uh, strong motivation to understand what it looks like. Because uh, actually, it will give us information on the Bernstein center that we cannot, I mean, in modular case, uh, over the L bar or FL bar, that we have no idea in general what the Bernstein centers look like. So, um, okay. 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 Um, so maybe what are the points? So you know the, the, the points of, uh, um, say, over uh, an algebraically close. You know that the points of this guy are in bijection with uh, closed orbits. Uh, so G hat of L orbits in Z1 of L. That's a basic uh, result from GIT. And then there is a, in this case, there is a, a theorem which is due to Richardson and Bates, Martin, Rawler, which tells you that uh, um, if you have uh, well, any group say, finitely generated discrete group, and H uh, reductive, possibly non-connected, over L. Then, um, and, and then you, you take some, some morphism, homomorphism, from gamma to H of L. Then when is the orbit under, so, and then on this, you, you let the, you let the, the neutral component act by conjugation. Then when is phi semi-simple, uh, sorry, if, uh, when you orbit closed, so the, the orbit is closed. If and only if um, for any parabolic subgroup P such that phi of gamma is contained in P, well, there is some Levy subgroup which contains this image the image of uh, phi. So that's the notion of complete reducibility due to Serre. And, and yes, and, and then we have this nice, this nice theorem which uh, allows us to, to work with... Um, uh, so in this case, uh, we, we, will sh we will say that phi is uh, maybe H semi-simple. 
Okay, and now with this theorem, the, the main tool we can, we can use to uh, understand the structure of this coarse quotient is the following proposition. So you see in our group uh, WF0, there are lots of examples, uh, lots of, I mean, there's a sequence of two uh, semi-direct products. And so, uh, so you want to understand what is semi-simplicity for semi, so for, for semi-direct products. So assume that gamma is a semi-direct product of uh, two groups. Then in this case, uh, I claim that uh, we have um, an equivalence between, so phi is semi-simple. So phi is as before. And um, the restriction to the normal subgroup is semi-simple. And the restriction to the other group, uh, so in general, it, it won't be semi-simple. But it is, um, so is H semi-simple. And this one is not H semi-simple, but it is H delta semi-simple, where H delta is the centralizer in H of the image of delta. But it is not true that it is H semi-simple in general. Uh, okay, and the main difficulty in this proposition is actually due to Richardson, who, I mean, it's, it, it, it follows from the techniques of this guy that uh, if you restrict some semi-simple to some normal subgroup, it remains semi-simple. And it's not, so it's, it's, it's not, it's not straightforward at all. And it's not true if the group is not normal. Okay, and this is uh, the main um, tool. I mean, this has the following consequence for us. Um, so a consequence interesting for us is that actually you can see that any um, um, yes, I will express the consequence only for the time space because we can reduce to the time space thanks to our uh, pre previous results. And uh, so, we, so may maybe, I don't know if I introduced this notation, but let B hat and T hat be uh, yes, preserved by the action of gamma F. So these are the, I mean, gamma F preserves the pinning, so there is a, a Borel and a, and a Torres. And then uh, the fact that uh, the consequence, which is interesting, is that actually if you look at Z1, oh, and assume, and assume a tame action, so we are in the, in the tamely ramified setting, then, so this uh, sits inside G hat times G hat, and if I take just the intersection with G hat times the normalizer of T, t hat, okay? So this is uh, the intersection inside this. Well, actually this stuff, it subjects, I mean, if you look at the, the map to the, um, G hat quotient, it is subjective, subjective on meaning that for any algebraically closed, so what does it mean? It means that for any algebraically closed field, you take a closed orbit, it has a representative uh, with some guy in T hat and some guy here. And, and this is uh, some uh, very powerful uh, tool to uh, deduce things about this, uh, this course quotient. And so, um, so using this, what you can prove is that, um, ah, okay, so in this theorem, the, the, first, uh, the first statement has nothing to do with this. So, but I, I should have maybe uh, uh, expressed it before, but oh, oh no, maybe it's also a consequence. So uh, the first uh, uh, consequence is that Z1 mod G hat is actually independent of choice. So I remind you that a priori our Z1 is itself is most likely very dependent of the, of the choices. 
But we have seen that the extension of scalars to ZL for any L is independent of choices. And now uh, I'm telling you that the, the, yes, the, the course quotient is independent of choice, which is nice because if you think in terms of, of the farg scholz map, this gives you a way to formulate independence of L in some, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, if it is canonical, it's more likely to be uh, able to, uh, to be useful for uh, formulating uh, independence of L. And uh, so second then, uh, so it's maybe some intermediate, uh, is that if you look at the map, so, uh, which takes a, a, a co-cycle to its value at the Frobenius at sigma, then this belongs to, yes, so I see, here I see the co-cycle as, as a homomorphism. So I'm going in this quotient. And this is a finite map. So quasi-finiteness is not complicated. Finiteness it really uses this, um, this result. And, and three, um, if I have a subgroup, reductive subgroup, so reductive, connected reductive, uh, which is gamma f stable, uh, then, and the case where I'm most interested in is the case of a Levy subgroup, for example. Then the map Z1, I mean, the, the natural map you can cook up. is finite. And so the, the relevance of this result is that uh, this finiteness result, when you plug it into a uh, farg uh, uh, machinery, so um, these maps uh, to the Bernstein Center and the compatibility with parabolic induction and the fact that for toride, I know this is an isomorphism, the fact that it's compatible with, uh, I don't know, twisting or central characters. And uh, all these facts together allows you to prove some finiteness result on the, uh, so, so this is place of finiteness result uh, for the representation theory of, uh, of G of F, and maybe let me quote, uh, maybe one of them is, um, is that uh, for any uh, open compact, uh, if you look at, uh, and for any, yeah, if you look at this ring, So this is the echo ring. Uh, it turns out that it is, um, well, if you raise the, the scalar to C, a well-known theorem of Bernstein tells you that this is the C algebra is uh, finite over its center and center is a finitely generated C algebra. And, but it, it was, a, yeah, it was asked for a long time if it was true over Z, for example. Over Z, I don't know, but over Z bracket one over P, uh, the same is true. So is, uh, finite over its center and its center uh, is a finitely generated uh, uh, Z1 of the P algebra. Okay. So, Yeah, so the last, um, uh, maybe, I don't know, I, I, am I out of time already, or am I on one or two minutes? Uh, yeah, two or three minutes, two or three minutes. Uh, great. Uh, uh, so maybe, I would just erase this one. And the last thing, I mean, one other thing, the last thing I wanted to, um, to explain is uh, that you can have a, a nice description of over fields now. So at least up to homeomorphism. 
So description of a field of Z1 mod G uh, over of L, where L is algebraically close, of characteristic not P. And how does it work? So, so start with uh, um, straight phi from the inertia subgroup now. I'm really meaning the inertia subgroup um, uh, to LG of L. Um, and start with uh, some, some phi which, you know, extends to some curly phi. And, and which is semi-simple. Yes, uh, th there is uh, some simple consequence also of these uh, Richardson theorems and so on, and this theorem is that if you have a semi-simple curly phi, then automatically it is, uh, it, uh, inertia has finite image. And so automatically it extends to WF. So that's why WF occurs here. And so which extend to some uh, phi like this, then well, giving a, a phi is just giving a Frobenius. Okay, so giving phi of sigma. Uh, which is which has the form beta uh, uh, cross sigma, and then uh, maybe uh, you can choose certainly choose uh, choose beta uh, normalizing some uh, pinning, so pinning b phi t. Or maybe I, I should put hats. T phi and X phi uh, of the centralizer, uh, connected centralizer. And then, okay, so do you do this for, so if you do this, you get a map from this torus, T phi hat. So everything is over L, so these are just L points, uh, just varieties over L. So from T uh, phi hat to uh, Z1, which maps an element T to the curly phi T, where, where curly phi T uh, restricted to IF is just phi, and then uh, on the Frobenius it's just T beta sigma. Well, this is really well behaved because uh, yeah, this, this is the torus inside the centralizer. Okay, and then the theorem is that uh, the collection of all these map, so uh, yes, uh, the collection of all these map induce um, Um, an isomorphism like this, no, not an isomorphism, but so I'm taking all phi beta as here, but uh, up to some equivalence that uh, up to some uh, equivalence, including, uh, for example, conjugacy and something else. Uh, and then I take the torus. Uh, this is contained in the centralizer of phi. And there is an action of beta. Beta normalizes uh, this torus because it fixed the pinning. So I can certainly take the um, beta co-invariant. And then on this torus, there is also the vial group. Maybe I will denote it uh, vial group uh, here. I will denote it by omega phi. Why omega not w? Uh, because there are too many w's. So w phi. And W phi has also uh, an action of beta, so I can look here, and, and, and W phi, phi uh, uh, fixed by beta certainly um, still acts on this co-invariant. And, okay, and then I put some, uh, <laughs> some uh, dotted uh, isomorphism to uh, Z1. And what I mean by this is that, in general, this will be a homeomorphism only. 
So this is reduced, and this is certainly, in general, not reduced. Uh, I mean, in general, meaning for bad primes. So this is an homeomorphism from bad primes, and this is an isomorphism for good primes, which are sometimes called banal. Um, yes, with, um, yeah. So, so this gives, so okay, the banal, banal case is not so, so interesting, but what's interesting is the, what, what's happening for bad primes, because what I said is that you are, don't have any idea using representation theory of what the Bernstein center looks like. And clearly this is something which really looks like a Bernstein center. And using the fark scholz map, then you know that at least these things uh, goes into the Bernstein center. Uh, up to homeomorphism, and, 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 and you have to keep in mind that this is some, some stable part of the, so it's not the full Bernstein center, but at least it gives you that the same pattern occurs mod L. And I'm done. I'm sorry for, for the extra minutes. Maybe we can have one or two quick questions. Sorry, I, I did not. This is a universal um, Yes, uh, well, we are about uh, we are uh, on an algebraic uh, uh, The question was: Is this a universal homeomorphism? And the answer is yes. I hope. <laughs> okay, Eddie, uh, maybe one. One more. If not, we can leave it to the Q and A. Okay, let's reconvene at uh, thirty-five. Past the hour, let's thank your consort. <laughs>